this is Matt. And this is Caleb. And we're Boosted Broncos. We wanted to give you an update on the latest parts that we've been working on for our 3.5 EcoBoost swap kit into the 66 to 77 first gen Broncos. So these are our mounts. You can see we're using a urethane puck, um, which is replaceable and utilizing the stock V8 mounts. Our, our strategy is we don't want to take away from the classic nature of your Bronco. So uh, we don't want to chop the frame up or, or destroy anything. So um, this enables you to, to put the 3.5 EcoBoost in without changing out the V8, the stock V8 mounts. We also have an oil pan that's been adapted uh, to fit around your Dana 44. Um, and then we have a, a fuel tank adapter which enables putting in the, the stock F-150 or Expedition um, uh, fuel fuel pump module and this drops in with the, the sending unit to where it registers the, the, the tank uh, level of fill. We have our standard um, power steering pump adapter and we also just finished an alternate location that enables maintaining the AC on, on these Broncos um, and you're able to mount the, the power steering pump uh, in an alternate location. I wanted to, to take just a little bit of time um, as people are starting to, to get interested in this swap as an alternative to the, to the Coyote. And I think there are some pros um, to, to this EcoBoost swap and we can talk about those. Uh, but it's, it's a valid alternative. I think you can get similar power numbers out of, out of either engine depending on what you do. But this, uh, this EcoBoost, given the nature of this uh, V6 turbocharged engine, and those who know about it and the, the torque curve, uh, this engine hits peak torque in, um, in the lower RPM range, so about 1500 RPM. And so the torque curve is very flat compared to the V8 uh, non-supercharged, uh, that the torque curve, is, torque curve is very linear and, and starts out low and, and builds up until the higher RPMs. And so this, uh, this engine and trans combination, the, the 3.5 uh, with the 6 or 80 transmission enables you to, to build that peak torque early on. And so it makes for a very responsive uh, ride that you just don't get out of a, out of a non-boosted application. Um, and these, these engines are readily available. They're, they're available in the, uh, probably in the millions now given the amount of time that they've been in production. Wanted to just highlight where you can find these, these engines and transmissions. Uh, so this, this, uh, this EcoBoost, the 3.5 that we have the kit for, it is available in a model year 15 and 16 F-150 as well as a 15 through 17 Expedition and Navigator. And then the engine um, is available in the 15 to 19 model year Transit that have the 3.5 liter GTDI option. Now, uh, many of these, if not all of these parts carry over into the 17 and newer 3.5 EcoBoost. There's some uniqueness there around um, the, the turbochargers being electrically actuated wastegates and, and others. Uh, I'm actually running a 17 in my personal uh, vehicle. Um, but that one, there's, uh, there's some additional challenges in relation to the, the PCM security uh, that, that, we're gonna, uh, that we're gonna be solving here in the near future. So uh, at present, the, the model years I've stated, 15 to 16 F-150, 15 to 17 Expedition Navigator, and then 15 to 19 Transit with the 3.5 EcoBoost option are where you can get this engine. Um, I wanted to mention that for the transmission, you have to have the four-wheel drive version of this transmission if, you, if you're planning to mate uh, with, with, the, uh, with the Dana 20. There is a swap kit that's available through Advanced Adapters that mates the 6 or 80 or 10 or 80 to the Dana 20 transfer case. Um, if you're running an aftermarket frame, there's space enough to use the stock, the stock Ford uh, transfer case. But if you're not running that aftermarket frame that's two inches wider on the inside, uh, you're limited to, to either the Atlas or the Dana 20 option for that. So in reference to 4x4 transmissions, 
Um, the reason it has to be a 4x4 transmission is because the, uh, the back end of the transmission where the adapter bolts on, only the 4x4 version has, uh, has this adapter uh, pattern that enables attachment of the transfer case. The tool drive version just has uh, an attachment for the, the yoke of the drive shaft on the back of the trans and, and no, uh, uh, no means to be able to attach a transfer case. So you, you have a couple of options for those transmissions. You can use a 2.7 or a 3.5 liter uh, transmission. Although the, the 2.7 for the, for the 15 and 16 model, your FM50 comes with what's referred to as the stop start or, uh, or stop, uh, I always get them backwards, uh, start stop or stop start, uh, either way that it's, that it's used. Um, the 27 version has the, the uh, fluid pump for the transmission that keeps pressure up when the engine shops, shuts off for that stop start functionality. And so that, uh, we just bypass that. We don't use the, the stop start for these applications. Although the torque converter is unique for the 27 versus the 35. And so you would obviously need to have the 3.5 version of the torque converter to make this work. Uh, dimensionally and internally, aside from the uh, torque converter and, um, and that uh, um, fluid pump for the, the stop start version of the trains on the 27, they're, they're identical, so you can go with either one. The, the other thing that I wanted to mention is um, the Transit has a, a, a power steering pump, a, a fluid pump, hydraulic pump attached. The challenge with that application is that that power steering pump drops down beneath the present air conditioner uh, AC compressor location, and that will not work with a stock frame. Uh, some of these aftermarket frames, there's the potential that you could use that transit uh, power steering setup. Although that, that uh, power steering pump was designed and utilized for a steering rack, a uh, rack and pinion setup that the transit uses. And these, uh, these classic first gen Broncos that we love so much, they, they use a steering gear and many people run HydroBoost uh, setups for the brakes on that and so this this transit application even if you can make it fit with the aftermarket frame uh, may not be suitable to for the flow and pressure requirements for that um, for that setup so the last thing that i wanted to cover with you is uh, again all these parts are, are presently available in addition to this alternate power steering pump excuse me pump location that we have um, so that you can uh, keep AC on your vehicle is I wanted to show you the difference in between the oil filter adapter between an F-150 and a transit. So this is a transit oil filter adapter. You can see that when it attaches to the side of the block that it comes out straight, okay? And this is an F-150 which attaches to the side of the block, it drops down and then comes forward, okay? Now the, the mounts that we designed require the use of the F-150 oil filter adapter. And I'll explain to you the reason why that's the case. If you look down here at the bottom of the transit bolt pattern, you see a rather large bolt down here, okay? And so our, our mount utilizes that spot, which is right here. And due to this being on the driver's side and the rotation of the engine roll, we wanted to make sure that we had uh, as many bolt locations along the bottom of our power steering, or excuse me, along our, our uh, motor mount attachment as we could to, to be able to maintain that roll uh, rigidity and strength. And so that's why the, we, we designed it for use with the, the F-150 oil filter adapter. Now we also make uh, a screw-in adapter. You'll see this is already installed on the transit variety. That we uh, that we looked at in some of our early prototyping, but with uh, with the F-150, each of these actually come with um, an oil cooler attached on the engine in their stock uh, um, stock location. But in the Bronco application, there there just isn't room for this oil cooler. And based on on my personal opinion in, in working with these engines, 
Typically, the, because these EcoBoost use uh, piston oil squirters uh, that aid in the cooling of the, the, keeping the pistons cool because the oil gets squirted up um, to the bottom of the pistons. Typically, in a Bronco type application where these vehicles are much, much lighter and you're not towing the, the heavy, heavy loads that these F 150s and, and expeditions and transits are designed to, to tow. Uh, the oil cooler is, is not a, a, a required uh, element for, for this engine. And if, if, um, if you decide that you need the oil cooler, then there's, uh, there's many kits available that, that will remote mount your, uh, the, your oil filter. And so you can relocate the oil filter and, and be able to maintain an oil cooler in the setup. And so because uh, we're removing this oil cooler, I'll just show you on the fly. Uh, we've got to pull out the, the present um, nipple that, that attaches this oil cooler to the oil filter adapter. And in the place of that, we have our, our own, uh, we have our own uh, coupler that, that screws into the, to the oil filter adapter and enables you to attach the, the, uh, um, the oil filter and with deleting the, the oil cooler. So again, these are some of the things that we're working on. We also have a, a fuel tank that'll be modeled uh, closely after some of the aftermarket ones that are available that already have this unit installed. Uh, we're working with a supplier on a mandrel bent CNC uh, a 304 stainless steel uh, exhaust that's uh, two into one. So, so two and a half inch tubes coming off the turbos that go into uh, a single muffler and then a three inch um, tailpipe coming off the back of that muffler, which is just about perfect for these vehicles because we're not running catalysts. You want just a pinch of back pressure. Um, that helps with, with torque and overall engine performance. And so running three inch uh, tailpipe is just about perfect for that application. Um, we're, we're also continuing to, to work on a 500 horsepower uh, calibration. At, at the present, we can provide the calibration for these at stock performance level, um, and we'll, uh, we'll continue to, to, to do the development and testing work needed to refine the, the, the higher output calibration. So it'll run at about the, the present performance level of a newer Raptor. Uh, and those are rated at, at about 450 horsepower and 510 pound-feet of torque. Um, but with removal of, of the catalyst, it bumps up the horsepower just a pinch. So expect that to be available in the coming days. The last thing that, that we're working on, well, two more things, is uh, a complete wire harness to be able to put this in your early Bronco or other um, early model Ford, Ford vehicle. And then lastly, we're, uh, we're, we're developing the, the turbo tubing and, and um, an intercooler for, for this application. And there's a couple options there and we're, we're real excited on this work that we're doing to be able to do uh, potentially two, two options, an air-to-air -air style intercooler um, and, uh, and a water-to-air -to style intercooler that package is uh, pretty cool in, in these early Broncos. So again, we just wanted to show you the parts that, that are available that we're, uh, that we're presently shipping to um, a select few customers who've reached out to us under early adopter pricing, which enables us to continue to fund some of this development work. And, um, and uh, a couple other things in the works, we're, we're just about to take delivery of our own a CNC plasma table to be able to, to burn out uh, many of these things to, to be able to, um, to produce things in a, in a bit quicker and mass produced fashion. So with that, I uh, just wanted to keep you updated. We'll be kicking out a few of these videos in the future. Um, it's been a, a little bit, this COVID I think has set us back in a few ways. We, we did have a, a supplier to provide us with the CNC plasma table and that kind of fell through after a few months of delays and so we had to reach out and engage someone new uh, but you know that's life we're, we're all trying to to uh, figure out this this new 
new normal, if you will, with the COVID-19. So um, the last thing we'll mention is our email is boostedbroncogarage at gmail.com. So reach out to us. Again, we're, we're providing orders to a select uh, few people who reach out to us there um, under early adopter pricing and anticipate that as, as we get things in full swing, the prices may come down just a pinch. Um, but we do appreciate those who are reaching out to us to help us uh, and support us as we continue to develop these um, these cool things like our alternate power uh, steering pump location, which uh, which is exciting. We're 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 feeling pretty good about some of these things that we're be, being able to do and and provide. Okay, thanks again. It's Matt and Caleb, and we're Boosted Broncos.